Hi everybody, I'm Joe Flick. I'm here with Amelia who is going to be doing our um, session today. I'm going to go ahead and turn my computer off, my uh, uh, video off so you can watch her and um, let you take it away, Amelia. Awesome. Thanks so much, Joe. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Amelia, in case you do not know me, and welcome to Aspen Basics number three. Uh, this is part of our Aspen training course curriculum. Um, so if you've missed out on the previous uh, sessions, that's fine. They've been recorded and this one's being recorded, so it'll be uploaded to Vimeo later on. Um, also, we have all the Aspen people on the call right now, so if you have any questions, you can just uh, drop that into the chat box and there will be a bunch of people ready to answer your question. Um, but today's session is going to be on editing your organization information. Um, so we'll show you how to go through that. Um, I have my screen shared, so you'll be able to see me clicking around. Um, feel free to ask me to repeat any part of this. Um, there's, let's see, five different things that we're going to show you with um, editing your organization information. And then as, after I have done all of that, I will then be asking for a brave volunteer to share their screen um, so that they can recreate some of these parts. Um, so just keep that in mind at the end of the demonstration, I will be asking for someone to try it out themselves so that they can uh, try and do it directly. Um, so the first thing that we're going to go over, as you can see, I am on the Aspen page, um, which is at aspen.mt.gov. Um, and you can see here that I am logged in because over in the corner in this yellow box, it says, welcome Felonius Gru. Um, and Felonius Gru is uh, our, our test library person. Um, but this is a way that you can tell if you're logged into Aspen or not. So on this home page, the first thing that you'll want to go to is your personal admin profile. And I think there's actually multiple ways that you can get to this, but the way I always get to it is I go into the blue box here and I click on Aspen Admin. So perhaps you have a different way of getting to it, but this is what I always do whenever I'm trying to get to this information. So now you can see that we're on the Aspen admin page um, and you can see that it's you. <laughs> uh, this is the picture of Felonius Gru. You can see that it's Aspen Test Library 1. Um, and this gray box is all your kind of personal information. And if you go down here, you can see all these things that you can update. So there's your personal information, so your name, all that stuff. Um, and then there's also this Aspen Test Library 1. So if you have editing privileges for your organization, this will say update. If you do not have editing privileges, it will just say view, maybe? It won't say update. I don't know what it actually says. Um, I think it says view. Uh, so that's one way to tell whether or not you can actually change your organization information. Um, if you are trying to change your organization information and you don't have editing privileges, um, you'll have to talk to your master editor at your library so that they can say, yes, Bologna Screw is allowed to change stuff. We'll go over that a little bit later. But for right now, the main way you can tell is if it says update. If it says update, then you can just click and I was it'll take you to the just update page. Going to tell you before you clicked, but that there's stuff in the to do box because obviously Felonius is a library director. But oh, when you I get back, back, no, no, that's okay. I think okay. I well, just I just thought that was cool. There, a lot of times we when we do this, we don't have stuff in the to do box, but there was today. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I should have seen that. I totally didn't even notice that. <laughs> well, I'm distracting you, so go right ahead. <laughs> no, it's fine. So now you can see we're on the editing page and you see at the top it says organizations edit. Um, you can see the name here and there's all these different fields that you can edit and change. Um, I hope you can see this, but over on this side, there's like this little red asterisk on some of the fields. That means that that field is required. So if you try and leave that field blank, you'll get a little pop up being like, mm 
Got to fill this out. So you need to make we sure see you it. Have a name. Okay, yep. cool. Um, and your phone number, um, your address. Right now, this is just the state library address. Um, and so this is just the basic information for each organization. Um, mailing address. Um, and then you can see that there are some optionals here, but it might be nice to consider putting in if you have it available. So your website, um, your catalog, um, there's all this stuff for your social media as well. If you have uh, Flickr, Instagram, Pinterest, wow, Pinterest even, um, Twitter. So there's a lot that you can actually fill in here. Um, so feel free to put in as much information as you want, or you can just go with the uh, um, basic red asterisk fields. Um, but if you scroll down, you can see there's quite a bit here. Um, and I do encourage you to kind of review this page every once in a while um, to make sure that things are updated. Um, so the most important thing though, is when you make any changes <laughs> is you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you see this blue button, you gotta click save. <laughs> so once you've made whatever changes, so I'll just go ahead and put in here, Thelonious Gru is a villain. And now you have to click save. And just to like, ooh, that actually happened really quickly. Occasionally when you click save, or in general, when you click on something in Aspen, it might take a little bit of time for it to do its thing. Um, so just be patient <laughs> while Aspen does its thing. Um, so once you click save and it's reloaded again, a way that you can check to make sure that things saved is you go down to the bottom again, and now it says, congratulations, your record has been saved. And it has the date and timestamp. So that's one way to verify for sure that any changes you've made are now permanently in there. So that's the main page for um, your organization. And again, the main thing is just to look through, make sure it's updated, make sure you needed to change things that need changing um, and that the red asterisk fields are filled out. Any questions about that? And while I scroll all the way back up to the top. Let me open up the chat box. Don't see any questions coming in. Um, cool. Oh, we just got a new person coming, joining us, so. Perfect. All right, so this is the main organization page. Um, and I did say that there's like required and optional information on here, but there's even more optional information that you can edit on your uh, organization page. And that's on a separate page. And to get to that at the top here, you can see there's this link, edit organization additional information. So if you click on that, that will take you to another page. Um, and this is all optional. Um, but this is going to give a, a much more fleshed out picture of what services your organization has. Um, so you can add here branch libraries and bookmobiles um, if you wanted to. Um, you can look through and you can add images of your library. Um, there's actually quite a few libraries who've done this, which is kind of nice. Uh, so if you have a really nice picture of your library or part of your space in the library, you can add those images into here. Um, you can include organization resource resources, so board bylaws, collection development policies, um, anything that you want publicly displayed on your library public record. You can also include organization specialties. Um, so never actually really looked at this, but um, yeah, they have like federal government, genealogy, local community information. Um, so if you have special collections or special things that you specifically have at your library, you can, you can highlight that here. Um, you can highlight professional organizations that you belong to. Um, 
all sorts of things. So again, all of this is optional. You don't have to fill this out. Um, but, you know, if this is information that you're willing to have publicly available, um, then, you know, it can give a better picture as to what your library is about and what it has to offer. Um, for a lot of these, if you noticed, if you go down to the bottom, there's not a save button or anything like that. Um, for a lot of these, like this professional organization section is its own thing. So you can just click on, I'm, I'm going to just add something. Sorry, Chuck, you might have to delete this later. <laughs> but you can just add a professional organization directly. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. And you can see it shows up here. Um, so there's no like overall save button for this page. For each section, you can just add or delete. I'm just going to jump in here. This is Joe. You know, so there is a, a little delete button to the left hand side of these. Uh, yes. Um, oh, I'll just go ahead and delete it then. <laughs> I don't think that'll work because most of the delete options we have in Aspen right now are disabled. And that's, oh, okay. that's just because we didn't want people to um, miss, you know, as they're kind of exploring around and we want to make sure that we have, um, we basically, we, even I can't delete things. It's mostly Chuck doesn't trust any of us to delete anything. <laughs> so no, that's not it. It's just that we really want to, make sure we have an Aspen and everything in place really securely so things aren't deleted and then never able to be recovered again. So um, so anytime you do need to del delete something, like occasionally I notice people get duplicate credits, for instance, in their um, CE report um, file, uh, their record, uh, you, you have to open a help ticket and ask Chuck to do that. Even I do. So even you do. We all do. So it's not we just. We all have yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. So no deleting for anyone but Chuck right now. Okay. Cool. That's thanks for mentioning that, Joe. Um, so, yes, this. If you do see this little X thing, that does mean delete, but it might not work. So you should just open a help desk ticket with Chuck. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top here. Uh, any questions about the additional information page? If you could just scroll down just a couple of lines there. Oh, yeah. There well, we go. Organization zip codes. Um, early on in the pandemic, there were some freebies or uh, things that we could get from some of our uh, services and they needed to know what zip codes varying libraries served. In this case, it's not populated. We've tried to populate it for most libraries, but you may wanna go in and update what uh, zip codes your library serves so that if we get varying server, varying, yeah, I guess services that can help with those zip codes, we have that information. That's awesome. new. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, so yeah, maybe a potential task for you all to test how well you've learned from this session, going in and adding your service zip codes. Okay, if there aren't any questions about that, uh, we will finish with this page. So um, that zip code thing, I have a question. This is Joe. Oh, yeah. So it's not just the zip code where your library is located, but all the zip codes that your library serves? I right? would say if you've got somebody with a library card from that zip code, that is what would count in that. Great. Nice. So not just 59601, but 59621 and yeah, mm -hmm. all those. Okay. Cool. All right. So we're finished with this additional information page. I'm going to go back to the Aspen admin page, which is over in this light blue box and I click on Aspen Admin. And that takes you back to your like, quote unquote, homepage. <laughs> um, and again, you can see here the update Aspen Test Library 1, and then also update additional information. So there's two ways that you can get to the additional information page um, if you want to update things on there. Um, Real quick, and Chuck, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I kind of remember the last time we did this, someone had asked about how do you,
become a master editor. And I think you do that in this part, the responsibilities page. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to click into here. <laughs> which is, by the way, the slowest page in Aspen. Good to know. So yeah, again, sometimes you click on things and it takes a while for it to do uh, do its thing. Um, so, you know, perfect time to like stretch, do some squats, some deep breathing. I don't know, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Although sometimes I wait and then I'm like, maybe I didn't actually click it. <laughs> you clicked it. Don't click again. <laughs> okay, I won't click again. <laughs> well, you can see the to-do page, the to-do list now. Yes. So there's that. 2021 Courier Hub Annual Reporting. Aha. Perfect. There it goes. Um, so on the responsibilities page, you can see the responsibility type what it does, and then who is who has that privilege. So you can see for master editor, um, so they can change all the stuff in the record. Um, these are all the people listed. So you can add more people um, pretty easily if you want multiple staff members to have editing access. Um, I'm not sure what the difference between master editor and master editor assigned is. So by default, directors will always receive master editor status. There is nothing about their library and their staff and their staff's continuing education that they cannot touch. They can do it all. Master editor assigned can do almost everything. They cannot delete the director, a uh, key thing. Um, <laughs> And I think that may be about the only main difference is just the inability to delete the director because we have to have a master editor and we know the director will always be a master editor. Mm. Um, I probably won't let you do things like delete the library, um, thing, things like that. So it's almost everything. And we really recommend that unless you're the director, give everybody else master editor assigned privileges. Okay, good to know. All right. so. I'm going to maybe just add somebody as a master editor assigned. Um, and in order to do that, you just click on a person. Uh, let's do Anne Smallville. And then you select the responsibility type. So we're going to do master editor assigned. And then you click save. So now once this loads, and does its thing, Anne Smallville will have master editor assigned privileges. So she'll be able to go into the organization page, make whatever edits, um, and can help maintain that in Aspen. We'll be waiting a little while here. <laughs> we might be waiting a little while here. Any questions in the meantime? I think most of the people that are on the call today are library directors, so they're okay. by default master editors. Okay, cool. Then yeah, I'm sure you have folks on your staff that you would like to give editing privileges to, and just make sure that you put them into the master editor assigned bucket. Um, yeah, and if you ever leave your position as director, um, it's important to make sure that there's someone else assigned before you leave. I don't know if this went through or not. Okay, uh, <laughs> change the responsibility type one more time. I think you may have clicked too fast. It's truly uh, the slowest page on the planet. Okay. It just hasn't yeah. ranked high on my fix it list. Now hit save. Okay, let's try hitting save again. But this is good for people to just see that sometimes with Aspen, you just better off to wait. I also find it's sometimes, it's certain times of the day that I find things seems to, to be a little bit busier than other times. But um, if it doesn't just, 
isn't working. I, I always wait till the next day and try it again. <laughs> <laughs> or you can always, oh, it worked. Okay, so now you can go down into Master Editor Assigned ah. and you can see that Anne Smallville is there. Um, so the original reason why I didn't think it worked is if you scroll up, when you change the name, it actually goes back through and it looks at what responsibility types you have not yet been assigned. And I noticed that that updated itself like 30, 40 seconds later, which meant oh. that that list hadn't quite gotten updated by the time you had hit save. So it got confused there. Oh, and then once that responsibility type list was refilled, then you could select master editor assigned and save. Okay. All right. That's good to know. It is. Um, so yeah, I mean, as you can see, like with with the um, with the organization page at the bottom, when you click save, it has that nice little message that's like, "Congratulations, your record was saved." There's not something on this page, so you know, maybe just try a couple of times. Just make sure you give it enough time to to think and do its thing. Um, you might have to go and like just check. The section that you want and it just might appear um, but again if you have any problems at all you can just reach out um, to chuck and send in a help desk ticket and he can make everything better <laughs> so any questions about uh, master editor stuff And in the meantime, I'm going to go back to the Aspen admin page. And if there aren't any questions, then that's pretty much it to changing your organization. Um, you know, you log in, you go to your Aspen admin page, and then you click on updating the library or updating your additional information, and then you'll be able to change whatever it is that you need. So once you figure out where those things are that you need to click, it's fairly simple um, to change your information and update it as needed. And we covered and positions and, and person changes to the library last week. So if you have any questions about that, you can reference the video that Pam and Suzanne did last week. I would also recommend after you make changes, if you click on that view button, the fourth one down, you can always go and see what everybody, well, okay, there's a few things that not everybody will see since you're logged in, but you'll then see the changes you've made and what effect it will have had on the page. Yeah, so if I scroll down, maybe I can see Felonius Grew is a villain! <laughs> so you can see that our edits went through. Um, so yeah, Chuck, that's a great point. Uh, that's another way that you can double check to see if something went through. And this is this is a publicly facing record for the most part. Mm -hmm. This is what people see when they look up your library. Even if you Google your library, very often it's the Aspen record that shows up on the first page of your Google. Um, so if somebody is looking for contact information for your library, um, very often Google is sending them, I noticed anyway, these days directly to your page in Aspen. Yeah. So we're getting. So it, it is a good idea just to keep it updated because, um, you know, a lot of people use it. I mean, I use it all the time to look up who to call and what the phone numbers are. Oh, and I, and know, I, I really yeah. count on it to find out what hours your library are open if I'm trying yeah. to reach you. Yeah. You no, know, and I know the consultants do too. So if you if you've changed your library hours recently, then it's time to go back in and update. And oh my gosh! I just realized this picture here is the plant quilt <laughs> that I made. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I must have uploaded that. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go All ahead right. and stop our recording now. If you're finished, Amelia, with, with I am finished. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and we'll, um, everybody who's on live, go ahead and stay and we can um, do a little practice if you'd like. And for everybody who's watching the recording, um, you can, we're just shy of half an hour, so it's still worth half a credit. So go in into Aspen and claim your credit. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, and there, there is, um, there are little handouts available 
on the um, Aspen events page for this event, um, or at least they will be. And uh, that's um, easy to find if you go to the today, the 7th of April, 2021. Okay, thank you, Amelia. Yeah.